Hello there YouTubers, here we have the blue Snowball USB microphone. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the box. Okay, so it's not too much to see on the actual box itself. It is compatible with the Mac um, as well as the PC. So although they generally tend to show the Mac, um, it's also compatible with Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows Vista and so on. A few inches on the box, There's nothing much else in the box, but that's the boring part, so let's actually get stuck in and see what's inside. So it opens from the back. Um, we have a user guide, so it's in lots of different languages. No one ever reads that, I know I don't, so that will get thrown to one side. And in here we have... USB cable, that looks like the standard printer USB cable there, and a tripod. So there's quite a bit of weight to this tripod, so it's uh, quite weighty, it's not, it doesn't feel cheap plasticky, um, it is metal so it's quite weighty and that would be good to hold the actual weight of the microphone and it raises and lowers like so. So if we have a look at the actual microphone, There we go. So that's the microphone itself. It's quite big, as you can see. It takes my whole hand to actually grip it. So it's not the smallest one out there, but hopefully that will give us some good quality. Um, grills all the way around for the different settings that we'll go into later on. And it simply screws onto the tripod, like so. Bear with me, we'll get there in the end. Hopefully that's not making you too dizzy. There we go. So. As I said, you can undo this, raise or lower as you feel fit. And then you can angle this around. It's actually on a ball joint here, so you can angle the uh, actual microphone around. So it does the whole package feels quite weighty, which is quite good. Um, so we'll have a look. We'll, we'll, I'll go away and actually test this, and we'll have a look at what the actual quality is like in comparison to your, your standard built-in microphone on your Macs and so on. Um, simple operation, the USB cable goes straight into the back there. Your three different modes, I believe mode one is just for podcasting so it just uses the front. Mode two is for louder events like bands and so on. And mode three is for interviewing for example when you want to use um, the microphone from the back as well, it, it captures the sound from all around the actual microphone. So uh, I'll probably be using it just uh, in mode one for most of it for podcasting and so on. But uh, we'll go away and uh, I'll have a quick play with this and we'll test it and uh, I'll come back with my thoughts and uh, a few sample clips. This is some test audio using the built-in microphone on my MacBook Pro. I'm around two feet from the actual microphone. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is some test audio using the blue snowball microphone. Again, I'm around two feet away from the microphone, speaking in the same tone of voice. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is using the blue snowball microphone in mode 2, around 2 feet away from the actual microphone. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is an audio test using the blue snowball microphone in mode 3, Again, sitting around two feet away from the actual microphone, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is test audio using the blue snowball microphone. I'm around two to three inches away from the microphone. In mode one, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 
Okay, so what do I think about this microphone? Um, being totally honest, I am never biased towards a, a product. I'm always totally honest in my reviews. Um, it's a good microphone, but used in the right sense. By that I mean for bands, for singers, for professionals, it's a very good, very sharp, clear microphone. For podcasters, again, it is very sharp and very clear. However, um, I would recommend the use of a pop filter. Um, you may have seen from the, the sample clips that using the blue microphone on its own, um, sitting next to my microphone, so roughly where the microphone in my laptop is, the sound coming through this microphone is much lower, it's much quieter than the sound from the, my built-in microphone on my MacBook. Now, you need to, to get the best out of this for podcasters, you need to be around two to three inches from the actual microphone. So you need to have your mouth about two to three inches away from the microphone to get the best audio quality. Um, however, your, your, pronounce, your pronunciations such as your P's and your B's may pop slightly, so you really need a pop filter. So a pop filter is a filter that goes across the front, and I, I do believe you can get it for this microphone, a filter that goes across the front of the microphone, which, which makes the sound quality much clearer when you're speaking very close to the microphone itself. So if you're just using the microphone as it is, the, the audio volume, the, the volume at which it records is a lot lower, and it's a lot lower than I expected, to be honest. So you need to be quite close to get the best sound reproduction. Unless you're a band or unless you're in a loud environment, it's going to be very clear, it's going to be very concise. Um, so that's the first thing, you, you really need a pop filter if you're going to be using it up, up close. Now the next thing is if you are going to be using it for podcasting and so on, you don't have a pop filter, filter so you can't really uh, use the microphone too close. You're going to need to increase the gain on your laptop or your desktop. So your actual microphone volume, you're going to need to increase slightly to just to increase the volume of the audio being recorded. However, the downside of doing that is that you get a little bit more background noise, so a little bit more hissing uh, and humming in the background along with the audio. So again, really, as I said, you need to, to get the best out of this, you need to be two or three inches away from the microphone with the use of a pop filter, and it's a very sharp, very clear microphone overall. So, my closing comments. Um, nice, sharp, solid product, you know, happy with the actual um, physical appearance of the product, happy with the quality of the product, it's solid, it does the job very well, the sound is very sharp, uh, very concise, it's got your different modes which are very useful and the, the all-around recording is brilliant for interviews and so on. However, for, for bands and solo artists and so on, singers, very good microphone. However, for podcasters, if you're going to be using it at home for your YouTube videos and so on, uh, or other podcastings, to get the best out of this, you, you want to be around two or three inches away from the microphone and to use a pop filter. That's where you're really going to get the best out of this microphone. Otherwise, you will end up turning up the gain slightly, which is going to result in a little bit more hissing and humming coming from the microphone. So in, in the far background, you'll hear them annoying noises. Um, so you'll have to either increase the gain or you'll have to get a pop filter just to uh, just to mask it slightly so you're not getting the the popping when you're too close to the microphone. Please don't let any of them comments put you off of this microphone. It is a very good microphone, as I said, very clear and concise, very sharp. However, I would recommend for podcasters the use of that pop filter. It really will make the difference. Mm -hmm.